It's now been approximately 25 years since the discovery of the mysterious dark energy. The unusual phenomenon that was discovered back in 1998 by two separate scientific teams looking at 52 supernova at various distances away from planet Earth. And by using specific supernova, often used as distance candles, the Type 1a supernova, which usually produce relatively similar brightness, the researchers back then discovered that the universe seems to be not just expanding, it's actually accelerating its expansion. With things far away from us moving faster and faster and faster. And back then this was such a groundbreaking discovery that back in 2011 it was recognized with the Nobel Prize and so this was the official discovery of the mysterious dark energy. But instead of providing answers to the universe, it obviously created a lot more mysteries. So many as a matter of fact that today we're faced with several additional mysteries from all of these discoveries. For example, the idea of Hubble attention, where the expansion of the universe seems to be different depending on what data you look at, and of course, the mystery of the ultimate fate of the universe. What exactly is going to happen to everything billions and trillions of years in the future? And well, the thing is, we now have a new release of data and new analysis and several new studies that provide a lot of answers for everything. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss this new analysis and new data release that doesn't just confirm the existence of dark energy, but actually tells us a little bit more about what's going on here, while also uncovering a few mysteries in the process, and more importantly, telling us a little bit more about the future of the universe and where it's almost likely headed. But here I guess let's start with a few basics, just so that we're all on the same page. So what exactly is this dark energy? In the past you may have seen a pie chart like this. Basically it tells us that the majority of stuff in the universe seems to be this mysterious dark energy. And the baryonic matter, so things that we are made out of, only seems to be less than 5% of everything. But this doesn't really tell us the whole story. As a matter of fact, it barely tells us anything. You might have also seen a picture like this that shows us the evolution of the universe in the last 13.8 billion years. And the reason it's so conical is really because of this expansion of the universe, with this last part showing us the acceleration of the universe in more recent times. And this is actually a little bit more important when it comes to figuring out what seems to have happened in the universe billions of years ago. And so today, based on various observations from a lot of different telescopes, and by the way, this has been confirmed by pretty much every cosmologist out there, today the scientists established that there seem to have been three main stages of the entire universe, or I guess at least three. At first, everything was dominated by radiation, so basically everything was just pure energy. And only when the universe cooled down enough, that's when matter started to appear. As a matter of fact, for the first few thousand of years, everything in the universe was pure energy. But it did start to slowly convert into matter approximately 70,000 years after the Big Bang, eventually resulting in a new era where everything became dominated by matter and not energy. And around this time, this is also where we get the iconic cosmic microwave background. The point in time when the temperature dropped enough to suddenly allow electrons and protons to form hydrogen. And by this time the matter was already more or less prevalent everywhere. But then, for billions of years, everything in the universe was dominated by matter. So obviously things like stars, galaxies and so on, and a lot of gas. And all of this lasted for approximately 10 billion years. But then something started to happen approximately 3.8 billion years ago. So more or less in recent times. This is also of course the time when Earth was already around and early life was already developing. Suddenly, the universe started to accelerate. Now, it was probably doing this even before this time, but 3.8 billion years ago, it really became difficult to ignore. And so these last 4 billion years, this is when the universe became completely dominated by dark energy. And that's of course that pie chart I showed you previously. Now, even today, nobody has any idea what this dark energy is or how to explain any of it, but it is estimated to make up nearly 70% of everything in the universe, and technically, it was also predicted by Einsteinian formula back in 1917. In his formula, this represents what's known as a cosmological constant. Now, he actually didn't believe this constant was real, and he even removed it completely. But, hypothetically, his cosmological constant, if it is positive, could explain dark energy, at least in terms of mathematics. But not explain it physically, or in terms of what's actually causing any of this. And unfortunately, we're not going to be getting these answers today either. But the scientists were able to discover something else in regards to an elusive parameter known as W. W in this case stands for the equation of state. 
Now, if you want to learn more about this, there's a neat link from NASA that describes this using gas equation as a symbolic analogy. But in a nutshell, previous predictions suggested that W should be exactly minus 1. Which presents us with the universe where as dark energy increases, so does the negative pressure that pushes everything away. And the more dark energy there is, the more repulsion there is going to be, with all of the matter continuously expanding over time. Or in other words, it kind of suggests that if W is minus 1, the universe is just going to be continuously expanding pretty much forever. But a while back we've discussed an interesting proposition and an interesting study that provided evidence that this W value was maybe higher than 1, and thus the universe is not just going to be expanding, but it's going to be expanding so much that it will eventually rip apart. And this was the idea of the so-called Big Rip. The eventual fate of the universe where everything just sort of rips apart completely, disappearing in the process. One of the older videos in the description talks a little bit more about this, but this was a while ago and all of this was based on much older data. The thing is, now we have completely new data coming from these recent observations and recent studies. And specifically coming from this beautiful telescope you see right here, Victor M. Blanco Telescope located in Chile. A telescope that's been used for over 10 years now as part of what's known as DES, Dark Energy Survey. A long and complex project whose main purpose is to try to map the entire universe, in the process discovering as much as we can discover about dark energy and pretty much everything else. And though it's already made incredible discoveries in the past that we've discussed in many previous videos, this time after 400 scientists and 25 different universities collaborated, we finally got some of the most advanced data looking at various supernova in roughly around 2 million different galaxies, with these galaxies containing thousands of active supernova and 2087 of them were type 1a, the supernova that we usually use as various distance candles in order to measure distances to different galaxies out there. And so by looking at these 2087 supernova and by measuring redshift to each of them, the scientists were definitively able to establish that first of all, the universe is definitely expanding, as you can see from this graph, and thus dark energy is definitely real, but more importantly, discovering the value for that w it seems to be minus 0.8, which potentially answers what's going to happen to the universe. By having W less than 1, it basically means that the universe is not going to be continuously expanding, it's at some point going to slow down and potentially even start shrinking again. And if it shrinks more and more, it might even reach the state known as the Big Crunch. Basically it goes back into a tiny point and maybe starts over again with another Big Bang. Although here we don't really have enough details about what's really going to happen, because the only thing we know right now is that it's most likely not going to be expanding faster and faster and the universe is not going to end up in the big rip. But even more importantly, they've discovered hints that, maybe just maybe, the density of dark energy in the universe seems to vary with time, which would naturally explain the unusual phenomenon known as the Hubble tension. You can learn more about this in some of the videos in the description. And once again confirms that the modern models of the universe are definitely incomplete. Current models and current formula rely on a lot of constants and the universe that does not change that much in terms of properties. But these very accurate observations kind of suggest otherwise. And so the overall density of dark energy can potentially vary over time. Why and what exactly is happening? There's really no answer for any of this or even mathematical formula to explain this, but the data does hint that dark energy changes. That's really all we know. And so this means that this simple model of dark energy that we have right now does not seem to work really well. And a lot of cosmologists already kind of knew that just based on this idea of Hubble attention that just has no explanation at all. Nevertheless, the data is still very clear that the universe is definitely expanding, is definitely accelerating the expansion and has been growing faster and faster for the last 4 billion years. But it also means that we have way more mysteries now than we had 25 years ago. And so even though back in 1998 with just 52 supernova scientists discovered hints of this, now with 2000 supernova it's pretty much been confirmed for sure. Although as you can see right here, the total amount of dark energy might be a little bit lower than we initially thought. 65%, not 70. But as I mentioned before, the overall density does not seem to be constant, so it's probably just changing with time. But the dark energy survey is still not done, it's still going to be looking at even more data, and more importantly we now also have 
ESA's Euclid machine that we've discussed recently, that's basically going to be sending data and conducting even more observation for many years to come. And we also have the new Vera Rubin Observatory in Chile that's going to be doing even more. And so hopefully in the next 5 to 10 years we'll get even more answers and potentially an answer that satisfies everyone explaining everything in the process. No. Who am I kidding? I don't think we're going to get more answers. Chances are that in the next 5 years we'll have even more mysteries, more unusual observations and even more crises for modern cosmology. Mostly because modern theories are definitely incomplete and have way too many holes in them. But it doesn't mean that we should stop observing, as a matter of fact, we should keep observing even more in order to finally discover what is going on out there and where all of this is headed. And so until those future discoveries and future observations, check out some previous videos in the description on similar topics. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.